Greetings. Welcome to Introduction to SQL for Excel Users, Part 16, Basic Inner Joins. I am your instructor, Dave Langer. Well, the base concept that we're covering today in this video are SQL inner joins. We're going to use something called Pareto analysis as the mechanism to give us some why, to give us some context for using an inner join. So if you're not familiar, at base, a Pareto analysis is the application of the classic 80-20 rule applied to business. So some examples of this include 80% of your sales come from 20% of your customers, 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of your products, and lastly, 80% of your defects come from 20% of the causes. So you get the general idea. Now, what Pareto analysis really shows you and why it's a wildly useful technique is that often in business, a disproportionate amount of value is going to come from optimizing a very small subsegment of your business. So for example, if you really want to goose your sales, if you really want to goose your revenue, if you really want to reduce your defects, typically you're going to focus on a relatively small number of things to optimize those. And by the way, just don't think that this is a hard and fast rule. Maybe it's 75% of your sales come from 27% of your customers, things like that. But the general idea, once again, is that you can really, really have disproportionate impact in your business if you focus on a small number of things as long as they're the right things. And oftentimes, Pareto analysis helps you identify what those are. So what's also awesome about using a Pareto analysis as a vehicle for the why of using an inner join in a query is because doing a Pareto analysis allows us to stitch together a bunch of the topics, a bunch of the concepts that you've already learned throughout this series, and really gives you an indication of the kinds of powerful analytics you are unlocking in your business data by learning all the things that you've learned. So not only are we going to be talking about inner joins in this video, we're going to be talking, of course, about common table expressions, CTEs. We're also going to be using group by with aggregate functions. And of course, we're going to be using window functions because those are all wildly useful things. Now, there will be no Excel in this video. It's all SQL. And that'll quickly become apparent as to why that is when I flip over to SSMS. Here I am in SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS. And you'll notice what I have here is a query from part 15 of the series from the last video. And in particular, this is the query from that video where we added a predicate, where we added a filter that says, hey, only return me back the records where sales amount quota is not null. So if you remember back to that video, the last video, we have to provide our join condition. We have to provide a way for SQL to match up data between two tables. And what we said in the last video was we want to match up on employee key. And what we said was, and what we explored was, if you, have, if you do a left outer join, you get all of the records no matter what from dim employee. And then we try to join up where we can data from fact sales quota on this join condition. And what we saw was out of these six employee keys, four of them didn't have any data in fact sales quota but their employee key, their first name, their last name was returned from the query, but they had a null value for this because there was no match in the fact sales quota table. So you got back a null value. What this does is says effectively, hey, I don't want those four customers, excuse me, those four employees coming back. I only want those employees that actually have data in fact, sales quota. So this essentially mimics exactly what an inner join does. An inner join takes two tables, matches them up on some sort of join condition that you provide, and returns back only the rows where there are data in both tables. So this right here, if I run it, notice that we only return back employees that actually have quotas. That This works exactly the same way as an inner join does. So that's why I started talking about left joins first, because a left join with a not null predicate works exactly like an inner join. So you already kind of know how inner joins work. 
you just haven't understood that there is some specific SQL syntax that you can use where it makes this part unnecessary. And as we'll explore later on in the series, we only have one join condition here. You can actually specify multiple join conditions if you would like. And what an inner join does is make it so that you don't have to put a predicate like this for every part of your join condition. It's just kind of a convenience from a syntactical perspective. And sometimes in certain cases, there's also some optimizations that the database engine can do deep down inside, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial series. Okay, so this is how an inner join works. So now you know conceptually how an inner join works. Take two tables, join them together on some sort of join condition, return me back only the rows that exist in both tables simultaneously. All right, cool. So let's move on to the Pareto analysis. Now that we know what an inner join does, because that wasn't too difficult. So the first thing that I need to do is do an inner join. And I'm going to be using some other tables now, because what we're going to do, what we're going to explore is what percentage of AdventureWorks's resellers account for a certain percentage of reseller sales, right? This is the 80-20 rule. So in theory, what we're going to say is, hey, 20% of the records in DIM reseller, because this is the table that lists each individual AdventureWorks reseller, 20% of these records account for 80% of the aggregate total of all reseller sales. That's what we're going to do. So let's take a look at these tables real quick in the database. You can see here DIM reseller, and I'm just gonna go ahead and select the top 1,000 rows. And you can see here, there's a bunch of data associated with it. To keep things simple, we're just gonna basically work with the reseller name column for the most part. This is the only thing we're gonna pay attention to. So we can just say the names, these are basically the names of the businesses, right? So Sharp Bikes is a type of specialty bike shop and they are a reseller. So AdventureWorks manufactures bicycles. They sell them to Sharp Bikes and then Sharp Bikes then sells them to their customers as a retail outlet. So we're gonna find out what percentage of all reseller sales does Sharp Bikes account for. Now we can go to fact, reseller sales over here and also do a quick right click and then select the top 1000 rows. And we can see a bunch of data here. But most, but what we really wanna do is we wanna say, okay, great. What is the aggregate sales amount for the reseller in question? And what you can see here is that um, it's possible for a reseller to have multiple records in the table simultaneously. So that means we're gonna have to do some grouping here. We're gonna need to group by the reseller, find out how many rows that they have. Well, actually, we're not gonna do that explicitly. SQL will do this for us using a group by. We'll group by the reseller key, and then we will sum up the sales amounts so that we can get, for each individual business, how much they've actually sold over time. Okay, so those are the two tables we're going to use. I'm gonna close down these query windows because we don't need them. And what we have here is an inner join. And as we talked about, what this does is says, look, only return me the records from this query that exists both in fact reseller sales and in dim reseller at the same time. And notice that we specify our join condition, our on clause, just exactly the same for inner joins as we do for left outer joins. Exactly the same. The only thing that changes is basically this right here. Instead of it saying left outer, it says inner. And then, then we don't have to put in that predicate that we saw earlier of is not null. Because we could do this, we could do this query as a left outer join, just as such, and then put in a where clause down here that says where uh, r dot reseller key is not null, and that would essentially be the same thing as an inner join. Okay, because the reason why I'm doing an inner join here, by the way, just so you know, is it is possible for a reseller to have a record in the database, but not necessarily have any sales yet, because maybe they're a brand new a brand new reseller to AdventureWorks. So this is why I'm doing an inner join. Okay, so if I run this, boom, you can see here, inner joins, nice. So better bike shop, better bike shop, better bike shop, so on and so forth, and you can see all of the sales amounts, right? Now you can see here also that all of these dates are the same. Most likely this is because better bike shop bought a, had made a single order for multiple products, in a single order, which is why there's multiple line items. So what we need to do is obviously is 
group by the resellers and then add, add these all up to get how much did Better Bike Shop actually purchase from AdventureWorks all up throughout time. Okay, so that's the inner join. Works just like we would do with the left outer join with a is not null predicate in the where clause. So conceptually, this is not too difficult. All the records that are in both tables at the same time. All right, sweet. Moving on. It would be nice to know how many resellers actually exist in the AdventureWorks database. So the easiest way to do that is we can just say, hey, grab all the records from dim reseller and dim reseller will only have one record per reseller. Okay, so that's why we can do the query in this, this particular fashion. We can say, hey, from dim reseller, pull all the records, but what I want you to do SQL is count them up. Just count up the number of records. That would, this is what count star means. It's like, I don't care, just count them all. Just count me the rows, that's what count star means. And if we run this, we can see here 701. And if we would like, we can also just double check this real quick by once again going over to the dim resellers call table, right clicking and select the top 1000 rows. And it should just tell me that there's 701 rows, which sure enough, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close this down again. We don't need this. So we have 701 resellers. Now, according to our Pareto analysis, 20% of those would be around one fifth. So about 140 or so, right? So five times 140, yep, about 700. So we would expect that if the Pareto rule, the 80-20 rule applies to AdventureWorks resellers, we would have about 140 businesses account for 80% of the gross reseller sales. So that brings up the next question. How much has the resellers sold all up? So we can do that pretty easily. We can go to the fact resellers sales table and we can use another aggregate function here called sum and just sum up the sales amount. And this will tell us throughout time and space, how much money, how much sale, how many sales, how, what's the volume of sales that AdventureWorks's resellers have generated for the company. So we can run that and we get back approximately, what is it, it looks like, what, $80 million? Yeah, a little over $80 million, 80.4 million, 80.5 million if we round up. 140 businesses, if the Pareto rule applies, about 140 businesses should generate about 80% of this, and 80% of this would be around $64 million. Okay, so 100, the top 140 resellers approximately should generate approximately $64 million. That's what we want to see if the Pareto rule, the Pareto analysis applies to AdventureWorks. Okay, so now we've got our baseline. Now, by the way, this is going to be, this number right here is going to be the denominator for each individual reseller. So what we do is we group each reseller in the fact reseller sales table. We add up their individual sales in aggregate and then say, okay, cool. Divide that by this and that says, says what percentage of the total reseller sales volume did a particular reseller generate? So let's start moving on how we can do that. So this is just a, a fragment here of SQL. Ignore this squiggly because if I run it, you'll notice that it works just fine. And notice what we're doing here. What we're doing is we are grabbing all of the fact reseller sales records, right? FRS, and then we're joining them to dim reseller, right? So we're saying, look, only return back those particular uh, resellers that are in both tables at the same time as based on the reseller key, which is the unique identifier in the database for each reseller. And then we say, hey, but we want to get the sales because we know there's multiple records per reseller in this table. So we need to group by, right? Because we want to get the totals for each individual reseller. So we group by, and then we say, give us the reseller name. And then by the way, also sum up their sales amounts. And let's go ahead and run that one more time just because my OCD is flaring up. All righty then. And what you can see here is exactly what we would expect. A typical bike shop has a total gross sales amount through time and space of about $83,500. Awesome, awesome. But also notice this. We know that there's 701 total reseller records, but only 633 have actually made sales. 
So we're missing essentially 68 records here, which is cool, right? We're still going to use 701 in our final calculation because there are 701 resellers in the table, but notice only 633 made sales. Sweet. So now we have this. This is the first step, right? Because we need to calculate a typical bike shop has lifetime sales of $83,457 and some change, but we also need to figure out what percentage of the overall reseller sales this accounts for. So to do that, we're going to need multiple queries, of course, which means that we're going to be using some CTE, some CTEs. And you can see here, next up, what I have is a SQL snippet that isn't legit, but it is an interim step as we build out this full query. So notice that right here, we can say, what is this? This is just the total aggregate number of sales for all resellers across time and space. This is gonna be the denominator when we calculate the percentage per reseller. So we need this and we'll make a virtual table that we call total reseller sales to encapsulate this amount. And the next, we need the individual sales, of course, right? Because this is going to be the numerator of our calculation of the percentage. Okay, and we can just go ahead and run this real quick, and then we get what we saw before. Sweet. So we've got the numerator here, how much did a bike store sell, and then we've got the denominator, which is the total amount of sales. So we need to divide those two numbers, and that will give us the percentage of overall reseller sales that a bike store generated. Moving on. So what we're going to do here is let me just make this a little bit more clear. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna list all the resellers, all the resellers in descending order by their lifetime total sales. Also, we're gonna create a running total. So let me show you what this, this is just easy, it's just to run this so I can show you what I mean. Okay, so what we have here is Brakes and Gears is the biggest reseller. They have generated a total of 877,000 and some change dollars in total lifetime sales. So brakes and gears is the number one reseller in terms of sales volume. And what you can see here is the next one up is excellent riding supplies and then vigorous exercise company, so on and so forth. And what you can see here is I've got a running total. So this is just this value, but this is this plus this, right? So it's cumulative product sales. Just do a running total, right? As we go down the table, just do a running total. So let's take a look at how we make that happen. Okay, these two portions of the CTE, of the, these two portions of the, the total query, these two CTEs we've already explored. So let's just focus on the final outer query here. So we say, okay, from reseller sales, which is the CTE that calculates the individual sales, go ahead and grab them. There's no where clause, so I'm not filtering them down at all. And what I want you to do is just go ahead and spit them out for me. My OCD is flaring up again. Let me fix these. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's better. So go ahead and spit out the reseller name and the reseller sales. But here's what I want you to do. I also want to use a window function. So you can use a window with the sum function. All right. So I want you to sum up reseller sales, but I want you to do it over an individual window. And how I want you to do that is by defining, notice there's no partition by because I'm using the entire virtual table as the window. So there's no partition by. But what I do, what I want you to do is sum up based on the order, in descending order, based on reseller sales. So what this says is, okay, in row, row number one, because we're using the entire virtual table as the window, because there's no partition by, and we're sorting everything in the window by descending order by reseller sales, sum up. Well, in row one, SQL says, well, the window is the entire virtual table. So the only thing I can sum up right now in row one is just the one reseller sales. That's why these two things are the same. Oops, excuse me. That's why these two are the same. But when we move to row two, we can now sum up two rows worth of information, which gives us this, inf this particular thing. And then when we reach the third row, we can, we can sum up these three items, which gives us this value, so on and so forth. So in case you were ever interested in creating a cumulative running total based on some sort of ordering, this is how you can do it. This is powerful stuff. You do this quite a bit, actually, believe it or not, when you're doing 
um, data analyses using SQL. Okay, so this is great, right? So now we can say, cool, we've got the resellers, we've got the cumulative product sales. And if we go all the way to the bottom, you can see here we're at the 80 million figure, right? Which is all of our sales. And look at this guy. <laughs> this this business, the mobile outlet, has generated about a dollar and thirty-seven cents in sales. So they're not particularly significant. Okay. So once again, we're, we're going to apply the 80-20 rule to this. So it helps us if we sort it, right? Because we want to do it in descending order, because eventually we're going to find some sort of cutoff where the the total percentage of sales explained reaches 80%. And we think it's going to be around, what did we say, around 140 or so. So let's see if that happens. So if we scroll down, we've got another query here. Now this is awesome sauce. Okay. So we don't need to worry about these particular um, CTEs right now because we've already explored them. So notice that we've got the cumulative product sales, as we said last time, but notice what we've done here. We've added another another column, another derived column here in our outer query called cumulative percentage of sales, okay? And notice that the first part of this, the numerator, the numerator looks the same as this right here, right? Which is the cumulative product sales. And then we can say, okay, cool, that's our numerator. But notice the denominator here, look what I'm doing. I'm actually using what is known as a subquery. I need a de the denominator value here, which is the total number of reseller sales across time and space. I need that to calculate cumulative percentage of sales. And what this does is it says, okay, cool. Uh, every I'm going to go ahead and run this subquery and I'm going to get this value and it replace this subquery SQL with the sum of all of the sales amounts in fact reseller sales. So let me just run this for you real quick so that you can see what I'm talking about here. Okay, so what this does is it says, look, if I divide this by the total amount of reseller sales, which we know is around $80 million, we can then get a percentage. Notice that this particular, the cumulative percentage of sales right now represents about 1.1% of the total lifetime reseller sales across time and space. Notice now we've reached 2% and 3% and 4% and 5%, so on and so forth. So what this tells us is using Pareto's logic is that we need to scroll down this table to see where we hit 80%. And since we know that this is sorted by our biggest, highest volume resellers at the top and the lowest at the bottom, we can then figure out, okay, does in fact the top 20%, the top one fifth of resellers as measured by their sales, do they account for 80% of all sales? That's what this allows us to do. So we can just go ahead and scroll down here and you see the numbers getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we cross the 80% threshold right here. We cross the 80% threshold right here. So remember what I said before was that approximately 64 million is going to be 80% of all gross reseller sales. And sure enough, you can see here, it's we reach about 64 million. No, actually right about here. Maybe we could say it's even bike experts, right? So it's um, the top 185 businesses generated, well, actually we could even say right here about, well, I mean, what, what, oh, let's be, let's be cool. Let's do utilitarian sports, utilitarian sporting goods instead. Because I was said, if I round this up, this is 80%, so I'm gonna call it good. So the, the top 184 businesses generated approximately 80% of all reseller sales. Now, what we can do here is we can calculate this real quick. We say, okay, cool. So let's go ahead and select um, 184, and I'm gonna make this a decimal, remember, because we don't wanna do integer arithmetic here, divided by 701. Now, if we do this and we run that, it tells us it's about 26%. So about 26% of all resellers account for 80% um, of revenue. Now, another way, to, another way to do this, of course, is remember, we said, look, there's not actually 701 resellers that have met, made sales. There are actually 633. So you could also, just for Grinzies, 
do 184.0, because remember, we don't want to do an integer arithmetic here, divided by 633, because you, maybe you say, look, I'm actually interested in, of, of those resellers that actually made sales, what percentage of them account for 80% of all sales? So if we select both of these at the same time, run execute, you can see, oh, well, see, no, look at that, 29%. So depending on how you define the denominator, you get a different result. But notice that, as I said earlier, the 80-20 rule is more a yardstick. It's more of an idea that a small percentage of aspects of the business generate a disproportionate amount of defects, sales, revenue, whatever you might want and might want to analyze. And by concentrating on the small stuff, the right small stuff, you can have disproportionate effects on the business. And this just shows you that that's in fact the case. Generally speaking, I would tend to use this number personally, because once again, even though there are a number of resellers that have never made a sale, they're still in the database for a reason. Maybe they just haven't made an order yet. So I would use this number right here personally in the analysis. And you can see here, only 26% of resellers generate 80% of all AdventureWorks reseller sales. Okay, that's it for today. Hopefully you're getting really excited about what you can do with your SQL skills now in terms of analyzing data. Notice that we can do this at scale in a database now over millions of rows of data if we would like. If you're liking the series, if you're finding it useful, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.